prophets are literally the head chief in charge of the kingdom of heaven's construction company, LLC. Apparently this false prophet is not only ignorant and arrogant, she's also a for-profit prophet. What you're seeing more and more today, uh, there's, there's a prophet on every corner. Every time we turn around, there's someone who's calling themselves a prophet. Interestingly enough, rarely if ever, and I don't think I've ever seen one who is doctrinally sound. I mean someone that can skillfully handle the text, so much so that they're willing to even have a conversation with someone else because they are at least comfortable and confident in the way they handle the text. They tend to only go around other people who are also just as ignorant or uncaring about the text. One such person is Tiffany Montgomery. Make no mistake about it. She's not a prophet. Uh, she's not biblical. I don't know what her heart is. I think you can kind of see it, but I'll leave that up to you. But she seems to be someone who is not only ignorant, She's clearly arrogant. The thing I don't do is lose. I don't take the L. Andy L, I am going to take this called legacy. She says, one thing I don't do is lose. I don't take an L. If, if, think about it. If you are really a prophet and you want someone to think that you're a prophet, why would you have this arrogant attitude? We don't have time to go over all of the many passages to speak about pride and so forth, but we all obviously know that God hates a person with a proud look. Uh, arrogance and proud is an abomination before the Lord, but even James 4, 6 tells us that he gives a great a greater grace. Therefore, it says God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Telling someone that you're not going to take an L, uh, that you've never lost and so forth, that's not that's not really in keeping with that with that uh, uh, spirit of the Bible, is it? What I'm never going to do is take no loss. I don't take losses. I don't know about you, but I don't take a loss. So even right now, in your lowest moment, I told my friends yesterday, they pulled up in a car. I was talking to them with something, and I said out of nowhere, take a look at me right now. It's the lowest you're going to see me, and I'm already up there. I'm up. Take a look at me right now. This is the lowest you're ever going to see of me, and I'm already up. Well, that's kind of arrogant, wouldn't you think? That's kind of thinking highly of yourself. What does the Bible say? Uh, for the grace, through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself or herself than he or she ought to, but to think so as to have sound judgment. That's not sound. That's silly, that's stupid, it's arrogant, but it's on par for her. I was serious about this, and I said, take a look at me. It's the lowest you're going to see me, and I'm already up. You have to have that idea about yourself before you get started. Right now, you're probably, you are the lowest you're going to be in your life. I need you to understand that. Right now, this is the biggest L you want to take, even if you're up. Right now, that's what it is. Listen, there is never a time that somebody betrayed you, whether a business now, what she's doing is this is really a pep talk, and I think it's her friend Terika Adams. I, I, I can't remember the name, but she's some a, a friend of hers who is into real estate, and so she's having her there, and they do things together. But this is in keeping with her. She is a prophet for profit. If you don't believe me, let's just let's just go over to her website. This is TiffanyMontgomery.com. Look at her website. You, what you, you tell me, what do you think we see here? In this particular website, we see that uh, it says about books and courses. If we drop down, we can see some more books and workbooks and so forth. You can order these different things. As a matter of fact, let's drop down a little bit further. And uh, let's see, there's speaking events and so forth. What I want to do is I want to see what we have for her. Uh, where we can shop or buy different courses on here, you can actually go and purchase courses. Now, this is from the from the profit. And so let's go to signature programs. Let's click on it and see what we have here. You can enroll now in some of these courses, a Kingdom Entrepreneur University. Does this sound like what a prophet ought to be doing? Well, obviously, it's not what a prophet ought to be doing. As a matter of fact, let's just see what the cost is. How much? How much are? How much is this particular cost? The cost of these one thousand, two thousand dollars, or one thousand dollars for these different courses. Another one to be to be uh, determined. That's pretty expensive, of course. Obviously generous of her kind of her to give us different payment options but again she is a profit for profit a for-profit profit what do you call a woman or person a woman 
who is selling herself. Uh, and that's make no mistake about it. That's exactly what she's doing. She is you, literally pimping the gospel. And also, I say, prostituting herself. If you're going to claim to be a woman of God, this is not what you do in the name of the Lord. You aren't you are you're using yourself as as a so-called prophet to sell a course, to sell materials, to also do whatever other venture. And there's nothing wrong with you having other ventures and so forth. But if you're going to be this prophet, be the prophet. Now you're not a prophet. She is not a prophet in any way, shape, from a fashion. But what she is is someone who is not only out after her own, but as arrogant uh, and really sometimes just mean-spirited as, as she can be, she's also ignorant. We'll deal with the other points just a little bit more, but she's also ignorant of the scriptures. Okay, not in real life. I don't know, girl, what you been doing last night? Okay, you're pregnant? You did fornicate? Girl, he forgave you. She's not married. In Jesus' name, we just thank God for no condemnation over her. We bless the baby. We thank you that this will be a man or woman of God. We thank you that his destiny is already fulfilled. We declare that the Holy Ghost has already hit this baby. The spirit of the living God hit this baby right now. We declare your baby filled with the Holy Ghost. The fire of God is upon this baby. And we declare that he will do great exploits in the name of Jesus. Amen. One of the things that prophets or false prophets tend to do, they travel with other people who want to promote each other. And so we see her being told by some or her being told of us or to us that she is some, unlike any other prophet that we've seen in decades. The reason why the body of Christ has a problem with this gift is because we have not seen a gift like this in decades. Let me say it again. The reason why the body of Christ has a problem with this prophet it's because we have not seen a prophet like this in decades. Well, when someone tells you that and you've got an audience full of people that are listening and buying, you can pretty much tell them anything, even if you want to tell them what prophets do and don't do. If you're wrong, no one cares because these are people that are gullible and they're buying it anyway. Prophets are literally the head chief in charge of the Kingdom of Heaven's construction company, LLC. We have to tear down anything that's not built on the solid rock. God's prophets bring correction and they also bring rebuke. This is the negative and unloving side that we've been typecast at because again, please keep in mind, I just feel like she, you know, they don't even say I'm wrong. Now they say, I just don't like how she said it. Well, neither would I demon. No, no, you're wrong. You are absolutely wrong. As a matter of fact, you don't know what a prophet is. Now, what she tends to do, most of, most of what she's doing when she's not calling out clear and obvious bad behavior, like calling out Beyonce and things like abortion and so forth, which, okay, fine. I'm not going to give you credit for being right. I will. We will deduct points for you being wrong. But in this case, the Bible speaks about, Jeremiah speaks about these false prophets. In Jeremiah 23, 16, he says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of these prophets who are prophesying to you. They are leading you into futility. They speak a vision of their own imagination, which she does, uh, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you will have peace. And as for everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, they say calamity will not come upon you. In other words, these prophets, they prophesy great things. As long as you're not on the radar or someone who is obviously and clearly against the Bible, uh, if you come to her, if you come to her gatherings, you'll only get good things prophesied against you. Now, if you talk bad about her, if you call her out, well, then she is going to want to pronounce death on you and say that, that maybe that you will die. And then, of course, you'll also have the audience cheering for that. And we declare that it backfires in their face. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the angels of the Lord deal a death blow to every altar that is calling for your death in the name of Jesus Christ. They will go before you do. And that is the word of the Lord. You think I'm by myself? Wait till you see this angel that come and deal a death blow to you, baby. You think I'm by myself? Wait till the earth open up and swallow you in. And that wasn't just a one-off thing. This is her before telling someone that if they don't repent, stop calling her out, then they are gonna die also. Where's the camera? Because I want you to know something. So I wanna say to you, lest you want your life, lest you wanna live past tonight, 
I would encourage you to repent. And I'm not giving you three days. I'm giving you three hours. Lest you still want to be in the land of the living. You have until midnight to repent. But have you ever noticed that she never deals with someone who can deal with the text? They never do. Why? Because they will be found out. They will be shown for who they really are. Ignorant, arrogant, false prophets who again want to exploit you. Yeah, and this is one of her con this is one of her conferences where she's selling things. And remember what the Bible says. The Bible says that there are Paul saying this that there are those who who are who see the Bible, who see the church, who see the ministry, who see us, see godliness or acting in that way as a means for gain, not knowing that being godly that's the means of gain. That's the actual gain. But he also says this Peter says this that in their greed they will exploit you with false words. Now, the only way they can exploit you is if you're gullible and if you too yourself are greedy or ignorant of the scriptures. This woman is greedy. She's ignorant of the scriptures. She's clearly arrogant and she is somebody that you should not listen. And you can listen if you want to. Do what you want to, but then you will also reap exactly what you sow. You give to her, you follow her, you listen to her, you're going to get exactly what the Lord is going to give her. Do not be caught up in what you think you see in terms of her having success success and then thinking that you're going to get the same thing don't be surprised that what you get that she has is a trip to hell <laughs> 